All right, Shalom. First off, we give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And this is Sis on Warm to the Akim out here that's doing and pushing the work in truth and in sincerity. I want to go on this topic of the cargo slave ships and how they apply to uh, prophecy. Okay, the things that the, the uh, Edomites, okay, the so called white people, did to our people on them slave ships. Okay, and, um, you know, just how sick those people are, man. You know, um, these are pretty much pictures, okay, of how uh, the so-called white man stacked our people up on the, uh, them slave ships, okay. They, you know, stacked us side by side, you know, um, and, and treated us like trash, man, you know. Uh... A lot of people like to sit up there and say, well, you know, why didn't anybody fight back? You know, but you did have people that, that did try to fight back, you know, and uh, they was they was put to death, man. You know, they was thrown off the ship, you know, killed, you know, and you people are, are here today, man. You know, a lot of you people, you know, don't don't realize that it's a higher power that put us into slavery. It wasn't the so-called white man because they're, you know, better than us. It was the higher power. It's all spiritual reasons, you know, because our people went off and we didn't listen uh, according to what the Lord said for us to do. Okay. This is uh, from the Wikipedia Atlantic slave trade. The Atlantic slave trade or transatlantic slave trade involved the transportation by slave traders of en enslaved African people was those people that they put in slavery wasn't Africans, okay? They were Israelites, mainly from Africa to the Americas. And then they're sell there, so they transported them from Africa, so-called Africa, to America and then sold them there. The slave trade used mainly the, the triangular trade route in the Middle Passage and existed from... The 16th century, I mean 16th to the 19th century, okay? The vast majority of those who were enslaved and transported in a transatlantic slave trade were Africans from Central and Western Africa who had been sold by other West Africans to Western European slave traders with a small number being Captured directly by the slave traders and coastal raids. Now, notice it says that the vast majority of those who were enslaved and transported were Africans who were sold by other West Africans. Okay? According to the so-called white man, you know, in their eyes, anybody who, who has, you know, so-called black skin, you know, that, you know, dare to sing. You know, it's a difference between it. A Israelite and a Hamite. Okay, the people who sold the people in um, in slavery were not Israelites; they was Hamites. Okay. Um, this is uh Psalm eighty three and two. For lo, your your enemies have a, have make make a tumult, and they that hate you have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel. Against our people and consulted against our hidden ones. Okay, how we get to uh, the western parts of Africa? Okay, you got uh, 70 AD. Okay, uh, which is called the siege of uh, Jerusalem. Okay, when uh, the 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 Israelites fled from uh, Jerusalem into the western. Uh, parts of Africa, okay. This is something that you you know you can uh, look up more on as far as the history go. You know, basically those people who fled from out of this this area of Jerusalem, they fled into the western parts of Africa, okay. And the scriptures go all into that, okay. Um, it says they have said, "Come and let us cut them off from being a nation." That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they 
have consulted together with one consent, okay, the West Africans, the, the Hamites, and the so the, the uh the so called West Europeans, okay, which are the Edomites, they consulted together, okay. They are confederate against you. So these nations they came together, you know, the so called white man came and they was looking for the 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 uh the Israelites, they knew who the, 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 the Hamites knew who the Israelites was. Okay? It says the tabernacles of Edom. Now it starts off with the with, with Edom, the so called white man, okay? The the British, the 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 uh the French, you know, the Spanish, you know, just to name a few. It says and the Ishmaelites, the so called Muslims, okay, of Moab, the so called Chinese, and the Hagarines. Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the, the, the fake Jews, okay? No, 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 no the, the, the Amalek, Amalekites are Edomites, okay? But it names them differently because they had a different, you know, uh, uh, part in the slave trade, you know, and they're, you know, the first amongst all the, on, among all the nations, Okay? It says the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assur, also is joint with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Salah. Okay, so during the slave trade, you know, these people knew who they was, was going after. Okay, the South Atlantic and Caribbean economies especially were dependent on the supply of secure labor from the production of com commodity crops, making goods and clothing to sell in Europe. This was crucial to those Western European countries which in the late 17th and 18th century were vying with each other to create overseas empires. Okay? And, um, you know, America is is a, a, a empire. Okay? How did America get built up? Okay? Um, let me get this scripture. Um, this is, uh, Habakkuk 2 and 12. Woe to him that builds a town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. You know, they, they, they built the miracle on the, the blood, sweat, and tears of the, um, of the, uh, the Israelites. Okay. They stole this land and they, they, uh, you know, they built it. But more importantly, I want to go into the, the topic of this lesson about the slave ships, you know, and what they, you know, they did to, you know, God's chosen people. Okay. Um, you did have some, some ships that, you know, rebelled, you know, some ships that um, fought back and stuff like that, you know, but our people are still over here to this day. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to get this scripture. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again with ships. The word Egypt means bondage. Okay. It says again with ships. What is those? What are those ships? These cargo slave ships, man. Okay. The Lord brought us into bondage with slave ships. It says, by the way whereof I spake unto you. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. Right? That's what, what they said, you know. They uh they they brought them over here and then they sold them. Okay, it says, and no man shall buy you. And what that no man shall buy you means is no man shall redeem you. Because we had a lot of people, you know, through the uh through the years. Okay, since slavery was abolished, okay, or, or even, you know, during the slave ships that tried to save our people from what uh, was was to happen. You know, you had a lot of people like, you know, uh, Mar Martin Luther King, um, Malcolm X, uh, Marcus Garvey, you know, the Black Panthers, uh, you know, and so on and so forth, you know, and these people actually tried to get our people out of the condition that they're in, you know, the black wall street, you know, and, and 
they all failed. So that's what that scripture means when it says no man shall buy you. All these people, they failed, you know, at the end of the day. So, uh, going into the cargo slave ships, you know, I was looking up some of the information about how, you know, what some of these slave ships were, how many people they was able to, to carry. Like, this was uh, a slave ship called Clotilde, okay, and it says it was the last known U.S. slave ship to bring captives from Africa to the United States, okay, it says 110 to 160 slaves, okay, so this is one of the slave ships that these people, uh, you know, that they, that they brought slaves on over here, um, this is a, a ship called the Wanderer, okay, and it says, was the penultimate documented ship to bring an illegal cargo of slaves from Africa to the United States, okay, an illegal cargo of slaves, okay, it says, originally built in New York as a pleasure schooner, the Wanderer was purchased by a southern planter and used in the conspiracy to import slaves. An estimated 303 to 409 slaves survived the voyage from Angola to Georgia. And that's just the ones that they, that survived. That ain't talking about the ones that, you know, ended up getting killed, or, you know, thrown off the ship, you know, so on and so forth. Okay. Um... This is called the Y Y the Golly. Okay. Was was a fully rigged Golly ship that was originally built as a passenger cargo and slave ship. Okay. Um continuing on, I believe it says something down here about you know what um, no, that wasn't this one. Lord Ligi Ligonier. Okay. It says, this ship was made famous by Alex Haley's novel, Roots. The American, I mean, the saga of an American family. Okay. In which it brought his ancestor, Kuta Kente, from Gambia, to the col colonial United States. Okay. It says. Uh, Lord Ligonier. Was originally laid down in 1763. And you got a lot of people that sit up there saying slavery never existed. You know where are the slave ships. You know. Hey, people are, 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 are stupid man. It says the ship was built for hauling cargo. Such as slaves, tobacco, spice and lumber. Okay. And that's what these people did, you know, the so-called white man, you know, they brought our people over here, okay, in order to, to build the enterprise, okay, to build a, 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 a empire, okay, it says, um, in June 1765, the ship's owner, Horace Andrews, hired a crew of 40 men and a captain named Davies. The ship had six decks in all. Four for carrying slaves and two for hauling spice, lumber, and tobacco. Lord Ligonier was a sailing ship built to weather Atlantic storms. It could carry 170 slaves, 40 crew members, and various amounts of cargo. Although it could carry 170 slaves if they were packed in sideways, the ship's capacity was only 140 slaves when they lay on their back. So they put, they stuffed our people in there like sardines, man. You know? And, um, it all goes to biblical prophecy. Okay? Um, I'm gonna, uh, get one more, well, I'm gonna get two more of these, uh, ships, you know? And uh, I'm going to uh, 
going to some more scriptures. Okay. It was another point that uh you know I wanted to, to, to bring out on these ships, you know, about you know what they you know the things that they actually did, you know, and how they treated the ship I mean the, the, the um the slaves. Okay. Which this is a lot of you know, you could go through this and you know, research it yourself, you know. But um here it go. Takora was a slave ship of the early nineteenth century. The brig was built especially for the slave trade after the transport across the Atlantic of human beings as slaves had already been outlawed in the first decade of the 19th century. She was fast and maneuverable in order to evade British patrols that attempted to stop such illegal slave ships. In 1839, a group of Africans were kidnapped from Mindelan in modern-day Sierra Leone and transported to the African slave port of Lombardo. There, a slave trader purchased about 500 of the Africans and transported them aboard to Cora to Havana, Cuba. You know? And just because, you know, they sit up there and say that, you know, slavery was abolished, you know, I believe, what, in 1868, I believe? That don't mean that every slave, you know, the, the, they just dropped the chains and they just said, okay, you can just go ahead and go about your business now. You know? That that that's not what happened, man. Apparently, they were still uh, uh, illegally, you know, transporting slaves. They still wanted to make money, you know. And and these devils got to pay. So it says the captives were stripped, chained in groups of five, and packed tightly into the slave hold, a deck up below the main deck and above the cargo hold, so that. One person's head, when lying in rows, was forced upon another person's thigh. In the ship's dark cargo hold, each slave had three feet three inches of headroom during the ten-week voyage. Okay, so these people were on these ships for over ten weeks. Okay, cramped in, no no leg room. Okay. It says the captives were sometimes brought up on deck and fed rice. Those were tried those who tried to starve themselves as often happened were whipped and forced to eat. They were, you know, they had tools where they would, you know, open up your mouth or they'll knock your teeth out and they will force you to eat. Okay, while they were at sea, water supplies ran low and disease spread through the closely packed unventilated slave deck at times oh, it, it was hot back there i mean un, under there too man you know uh hot you had you know it was stuffy at times when supplies ran low the crew would chain 30 to 40 slaves together attach a heavy weight to the end and throw the weight overboard which would drag the chains and the slaves underwater drowning them so these are the things that the so-called white man did. They, you know, they put a heavy weight on our on our people, and they threw them under the water. You know, like you know, like an anchor and drowned them, man. Nearly a third of the slaves died during the long voyage from disease, malnutrition, and beatings. Okay, and just hearing about this type of stuff, man. You know, they sit up there and make it seem like we're supposed to just. Uh, though, you know, turn a blind eye to this type of stuff. Well, the scripture says, you know, otherwise, man, you know. Um, I'm going to get uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and uh, 15. It says, that which has been is now, and that which is to be has already been, and God requires that which is past you know so the lord requires those things that are, that are, you know that are past you know so you can't you can't just turn turn a blind eye to the things that you know these slaves uh did to to our people man you know and they also had a slave ship named jesus okay jesus of lubeck 
Okay. Um. This was this was a Karak built in the free city of Lubeck. Okay, in the early 16th century, around 1540, the ship, which had mostly been used for representative purposes, was acquired by King uh, the Eighth. King of England, King Henry, I mean Henry the Eighth, King of England, to augment his fleet. Okay, uh, it says Jesus of Lubeck became involved in the Atlantic slave trade under John Hawkins, who organized four voyages to West Africa and the West Indies between 1562 and 1568. Okay, so this was the first time that our people was introduced to. A slave, you know, the the name uh, Jesus, man, you know, which the 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 one who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, that's not his name. His name is Yahweh Shah. Okay. Now, um, continuing on, the scripture says, you know, our people will be brought into Egypt again with ships, slave ships. Uh, I'm gonna get this scripture. Um, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, forty-eight. Therefore shalt thou serve your enemies, which the Lord shall send against you, and hunger, and that's where our people was, you know, on the slave ship, they was in hunger, okay, and and thirst, they was thirsty, and in nakedness, and in want of all things, you know, they wanted their, their freedom, you know, more, more than anything, man. It says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck. Until he have destroyed thee, you know, and that's even to, to to today, man. You know, our people are still under the conditions of slavery. Okay, um, let me get this scripture, you know, because we was talking about um how you know they 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 started this uh this uh slave trade, you know, to try to you know create an overseas empire. Okay. And um, they pretty much, you know, they, they accomplished their goal, man. Okay. Um, this is uh, Revelation 18 and 10. Okay. Because America is going to be destroyed. Okay. It says, uh, Revelation 18 and 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, so bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and thying wood and all manner, manner of vessels, I mean, and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and brass and iron and marble. Okay, these are all the things that America sells. Okay, and trades. It says, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense. And wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots, you know, the cars and you know, so on and so forth, and slaves and souls of men. Okay, so America they got rich off of all of these things, but what started all of it is the slaves. The transatlantic slave trade. Okay. And I'm going to get this scripture. You know just to end it. Revelation 13 and 9. If any man have an ear let him hear. He that leads into captivity. Shall go into captivity. So all of these nations. Okay. And uh, the book of uh, Psalm 83. Okay. Edomites. The Ishmaelites, Moabites, Hagarines, the Hamites, okay, Japanese, uh, the so-called Jews, okay, all of these people, okay, they led into captivity and they're going into captivity. He that kills with the sword 
must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. Okay? So, with that, you know, hopefully this was edifying, man. You know, these these devils, you know, got a lot to pay for, man. You know, they got a lot of blood on their hands, you know. So, with that, you know, hopefully this was edifying. I want to say uh, salam until next time.